When we designed Crazy Catapults, we had a few different ideas in mind. We wanted to make a game that was fun for a wide range of players. Casual players will enjoy it for its simplicity, while more strategy-based players and hardcore gamers will enjoy the risk and numbers game that can be played with the wagering system. Anyone aged 13 and up can easily jump in and enjoy the family-friendly gameplay with up to four of their friends. We designed Crazy Catapults for primarily mobile platforms such as smartphones and tablets. This will allow players to easily take it wherever they go. We wanted Crazy Catapults to be a fun experience that can be played in a relatively short amount of time. When we created the game, we pictured kids playing in the back of a car or a group of friends playing at lunch while they waited for their food. Crazy Catapults was designed with risk and resource management in mind as two of its primary features. Players will not be forced to farm materials, but they are expected to keep control over their inventory carefully while balancing the high-risk for high-reward wagering mechanic. Careless bets and the wrong use of resources can leave a player behind while their friends catapult ahead. The betting or wagering system is one of the main mechanics we had in mind while designing Crazy Catapults. We decided on a system in which each player will wager some of their resources each turn before they draw jewels from the jewel pile. If their wager successfully matches up with the jewels they have drawn, then they are rewarded with additional resources. In this example, the player wagered two stone tokens. Then the player draws from the jewel pile. They draw two diamonds from the pile, and since diamonds are converted into the stone resource, their bet pays off. They gain two stones from the diamonds, as well as two additional stones for their wager. The second mechanic we had in mind was the idea of consuming. This is brought into reality when a player uses up some of their resources in order to build one of the parts required for their catapult. Each player must create rope, a catapult bucket, a chassis, ammo, wheels, and operators before they can claim victory. In this example, the player can be seen using the consume mechanic. The player taps on the operator button on the bottom of their screen, and because the player has enough of their required resources, the build button is highlighted and the player can now tap it to create the operators. This consumes the required resources in the building process, taking them out of the player's inventory. Our collect mechanic is somewhat more complicated than the previous few. As mentioned when we discussed the wagering mechanic, players draw from a jewel pile during each turn. They can collect the resources corresponding to the jewels they have drawn. They also have the option of playing a minigame where they pay a jewel of one type to try and gain a resource token of another. In this example, the collect mechanic is explained in more detail. The player draws from the jewel pile and decides to exchange two of the jewels in order to collect their respective tokens. The third jewel, a ruby, he decides to pay the rock quarry to have the chance to gain a stone token. The player must make it through the minigame to exchange the ruby for the stone token. Had the player failed to get the stone through the minigame, they would have lost the ruby without gaining anything in exchange. The steal mechanic is just that. It allows players to steal other resource tokens from other players. In this example, the player can be seen selecting the steal token from their inventory. Selecting a player to steal from brings up the player's inventory and what catapult pieces they've completed. After selecting a resource in the player's inventory, the player using the steal token can then choose to take one of the resources from their opposing player and add it to their own inventory. The last mechanic of the game is create. This is exclusively used for the creation of catapult pieces. The resources that players gain, whether it be from wagering, collecting, or stealing, all go towards the creation of the catapult pieces. This example shows a player creating the catapult chassis. The player has three logs which are required to create the catapult chassis. He then taps the chassis button at the bottom of the screen, which brings up the create screen. This screen allows the player to consume the required tokens and create the selected catapult piece, bringing them one step closer to victory. In both roulette and in crazy catapults, players are expected to guess the outcome of a random event. In crazy catapults, it's the jewels drawn at the beginning of the collection phase. In roulette, players instead have to guess where the ball might land on the roulette wheel. In both games, players are rewarded for being able to predetermine the outcomes, and the more they wager, the more they're rewarded. Both of these games are very different, however. Roulette's whole game is based on winning or losing your wager, while in Crazy Catapults, this mechanic is a smaller aspect of the game. It is an avenue towards gaining the necessary resources for winning. Civilization share a connection to Crazy Catapults as well. In both games, players may win by assembling pieces into a larger construct. This is only one way to win in Civilization, though, while it is the only win condition in Crazy Catapults. Another difference between these two games comes in their lengths. Crazy Catapults was designed to be relatively short, while Civilization is a much longer, more drawn-out game. The final game we found that was similar to Crazy Catapults is a game called Wits and Wagers. Wits and Wagers is a trivia-based game where players wager on each other's answers, hoping that that player answered correctly. Crazy Catapults is a turn-based game, while Wits and Wagers is played by all players all at the same time.